Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem to News at 6 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan and I'm Whitney Ward. We're going to get to all of that snow coverage here in just a moment, but our top story at this hour, Caleb Sharp, the accused Freeman High School shooter, pleaded guilty to first degree murder today. Sharp was 15 years old when he walked into the high school and opened fire, killing one student, Sam Strahan, and injuring three others. It all happened in the fall of 2017. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley was the only TV reporter in the courtroom today. She joins us live now in the studio to explain what happened. Amanda? Well, this is a huge step in the Freeman school shooting case. This morning, we expected the judge would hear arguments on moving the trial out of Spokane County, even delaying the trial again. But to our surprise, Caleb Sharp agreed to a plea deal and admitted his guilt. Now, we do want to be transparent with our viewers that today we are showing the shooter's face from the hearing today, and this is due to the seriousness of the crime and because he is now an adult. One hit in the back, one in the arm. You can't erase the trauma. You just have one shooter. But you can try to move forward and find some peace. I heard the gunshot and saw people running and screaming. On September 13th, 2017, 15-year-old Caleb Sharp walked into Freeman High School with a duffel bag full of guns. He shot and killed one student and injured three others. Mom, we're on lockdown. There's somebody with a gun and please... <laughs> She's like, I'm scared. We're in lockdown and, and I just dropped the phone and just came here as quick as I could. This is the memory the Freeman community has waited four years to move forward from. The trial was delayed multiple times. In fact, the last class of students who witnessed the trauma of that day graduated from high school without the suspect being held accountable. The families obviously are not happy about the delay. All that waiting is now coming to an end. Today, the suspect agreed to plead guilty to premeditated first-degree murder, three counts of attempted murder, and second-degree assault. What is your plea, sir? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty, Your Honor. When the judge accepted the plea of guilt, he read the initials of all the victims, including the 48 listed under the assault charge. The defendant, Caleb Sharp, in the state of Washington, <coughs> on or about September 13th, 2017, did intentionally assault SNB and CAO and CGC and DJL and KNS. So the court would accept your plea today and would find you guilty as charged. In a statement from the Freeman School District today, Superintendent Randy Russell said they are relieved the case is settled and that the plea agreement closes this chapter of the tragedy and avoids having to experience the trauma all over again. Okay, so Amanda, what do we now know about his sentencing that was coming up? Yeah, so it's scheduled for to happen after a hearing that starts on January 18th. And then at the sentencing, Freeman families will be able to share their victim impact statements. And they'll be able to be heard mm -hmm. in person and on Zoom. And that's, that's important because yeah. we have a lot of those students who have gone off to college and mm -hmm. they're not in the area anymore. So it's important that they have their chance to share, share their impact statements. Mm -hmm. And Amanda, I'm just curious, we were out there on, on scene mm -hmm. the yeah. day of that shooting and it's one thing to, to watch these things unfold on TV. It's another thing to be there in person because mm -hmm. you really get a sense for kind of how shocked these folks are who went through all this. Yeah. What do you recall the most about that day? You know, I one of the things I recalled the most was seeing just the chaos, right? The parents mm -hmm. running from their cars. Mm -hmm. There were cars all up and up along yeah, that highway. Like almost a mile. I yeah, would say. yeah. And, and I'd never been to that area before. So seeing it and just you just saw people everywhere, uh, ambulance, fire trucks. I think the one thing that will always stand out to me the most is um, uh, actually hearing parents scream. Mm -hmm. um, that was really hard. Gosh, right. and I, at the time it was hard to keep my reporter hat on because right. just so so much emotion in yeah. the area. So I think that's going to stick with me forever. And, and these are just kids, right? They're, they're like, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old yeah. just experiencing something horrific and yeah. trying to process that. So right. you can't help but just feel awful for them. Yeah. I think your emotion here right now, I know you <laughs> talked about it. You heard it and also felt it in the courtroom again today. So even though four years yeah. has passed, that emotion is still very fresh. It does. It sneaks up on you a little yeah. bit, just kind of hearing. And, and really today when the judge, really he did, he read every single initial yep. of those juvenile victims, read all 48. And just hearing that, it was kind of like, it, it, it reminded you of being back there again and just feeling that right. emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh keep us God. posted on the sentencing yeah. later this month, Amanda Rowley. Thank you very Thank much. You.
All right, our other top story tonight, the massive snowstorm today. We have team coverage tonight across eastern Washington and North Idaho. So we will get to all of these different reporters here in just a few moments. But first, there is no way to get to the west side of the state right now. Look at this map. Snoqualmie, Stevens, Blewett, White Pass, all closed. And if you take a look at the pictures, this is from Snoqualmie and 4th of July passes today. Idaho's mountain passes are open, but they are certainly encouraging people to stay off of the roads if you can. Very slick conditions, fallen trees, slide offs, and still very heavy snow. Yeah, do not want to be on a mountain pass mm, anytime soon, no. right? So it's not just the mountains that are seeing that extreme amounts of snowfall, but really everywhere right now in the inland northwest is. So we do want to go out now to meteorologist Tom Sherry. And Tom, of course, we are all asking and wondering how much snow did we really get here by the end of today? Officially out at the airport, just a little bit over four inches. But if you look across the area, we've had uh, spotter reports and it's really anywhere between four and six inches of snow that has fallen. Keep in mind, last night before this latest storm happened, we had about seven inches of snow on the ground. So you add that other four onto it, we've got at least 11 inches of snow on the ground right now. And of course, some areas uh, see even more than that. They're over a foot of snow on the ground. And look at the uh, latest snowfall report from Leavenworth. That's not accumulated snow of 33 inches. That's from this last storm in Okanagan. It dumped uh, 18 inches of snow. Quincy saw 13 inches of snow. Moscow, Idaho got eight inches of snow from this last storm and Post Falls seven inches of snow. When we take a look at the winter storm warning, we've got again that will be in effect till eight o'clock tonight. Three to four inches of additional snowfall possible in the Spokane area, although it has mostly changed over to a freezing rain right now. And now we have a wind advisory in effect across much of eastern Washington and the lower Columbia Basin. We could see wind gusts on Friday between 40 and 50 miles per hour. So you can see the pink there on the Doppler radar. That indicates a freezing rain or a sleet, maybe I mean a rain snow mix. It's still cold enough over in Idaho where it's falling in the form of snow. We have rain now now beginning to fall down under the Palouse. Of course, that is just going to make this an incredibly messy, messy night and messy commute again tomorrow morning. We'll look for a daytime high Friday of 41 degrees with rain and strong winds. And then over the weekend, all that snow that absorbed all that rain on Friday, it's going to freeze up. And in the areas that did not get plowed, I think it's going to be kind of like a concrete with lows in the 20s and daytime highs only around 30s. Well, we're seeing some of that freezing rain that I just mentioned about mentioned, so that's making for extremely dangerous road conditions. We've got meteorologist Thomas Patrick right now out in the Creme 2 storm tracker. So Thomas, how are the roads looking right now? Yeah, there, Tom, a uh, huge difference between the interstate and the roads in town. We've been doing this uh, uh, lap and circling between Sprague and Appleway Boulevard. And I want to show you what Appleway looks like as you look out the rear here. This is almost a sheet of ice. The rain has trickled down to more of a drizzle, but it's been kind of steady since about three or four o'clock earlier this afternoon. And that rainfall has created just this sheet of ice. In fact, it's on, even though it looks like it's well plowed from the four to seven inches of snow that we had from the morning hours, it's just the rain has been coming down and has been creating these very slippery conditions. Most everybody's only driving at about 10, 15, maybe 20 miles per hour here on Appleway Boulevard, but it does not look particularly good. You can see the shininess of the roadway at the bottom of the screen here. That is the ice that has come down. And while the, it's still kind of drizzling and trickling outside, it's still 28 degrees. Uh, so this is just going to stay a sheet of ice unless there's any kind of treatment done because there's no way to actually dig in and actually plow that ice. So obviously this is hugely a, a different situation compared to what we saw on the interstate. By the way, we have huge traction tires here on this uh, Jeep of a storm tracker. Great in the snow, but it is not helping at all with the ice. So even we have to be careful here from our mobile storm tracker. I'm meteorologist Thomas Patrick back to you in the studio. All right, Thomas, thank you very much. So with all the snow that we saw today, the city has now officially activated a full city plow in Spokane. The lines that are shaded there in purple, that's what the plows are working on right now. I don't see any green on there, but if you log on and you see green, that means that area is done. 
Blue is what they are working on, and then red means it's coming up next. If you'd like to check the progress in your area, just head to the City of Spokane's website. They activate the full city plow when there's four inches of mm -hmm. snow on the ground. That means they'll work around the clock until all the streets are cleared. That typically takes about three days to complete. Our Ian Smay has been driving around Spokane pretty much most of the day. He is joining us now with more on the city's plowing efforts. Hi, Ian. I'm here in North Spokane off of Division in Francis. And let me tell you, it is still getting slick out here. The freezing rain started a few hours ago and made already slippery, slippery roads even worse. And this all comes as the city of Spokane has crews working 24 hours a day until all of the roads are plowed. As Spokane sees its biggest snowfall of the season, the race is on to keep streets and sidewalks clear. Well, some of the sidewalks downtown are good, but as you get up closer to here, the, si the sidewalks are still pretty slippery. Earlier in the day, as the snow was starting to taper off, road conditions were poor. I, I would say the roads are, are very dangerous uh, out right now. I mean, there's just, you know, packed snow and it's, and it's, it's slick when you, you go on them. In response to the snowfall, the city of Spokane initiated a full city plow. That means there will be crews working around the clock until all roads in the city have been plowed. A full city plow usually takes about three days and the city's public works department is asking drivers to be patient. Weaving between uh, plows is not a good idea. Uh, it's dangerous for both the driver of the vehicle and the plow drivers. Even with the plows doing their best to clear the roads, they can only do so much. A common complaint is about berms forming at the ends and sides of roads. With this snowstorm coming before snow from the last storm could melt, the berms can get pretty big. But Davis says it's hard to avoid making them. We were out of room to put it places, right? Just like we do in our own yards. So that's always going to be, you know, some, somewhat of a challenge, but our, our crews work really hard to um, try to minimize that as much as possible. One way to stay safe is to stay home if possible. On Thursday afternoon, that seemed to be most people's plan. There's not that much traffic out here, so I think a lot of people are either in work or stayed home, so that the traffic is, is pretty light, which is probably a good thing. Davis also said the crews do have de-icer and sand with them in those trucks that they can put down as this freezing rain is turning some roads into more of ice rinks than streets. She also asked anyone that has, sees any problems caused by the snow in their area to call 311. Reporting in North Spokane, Ian Smay, Prem 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. And also today, there were some concerns about a driver shortage potentially impacting the ability to keep the streets clear. The city of Spokane says it has been a struggle for sure, but before winter even got started, they got creative and figured out how to fill some of those gaps. Well, I think that every company is, is struggling with staffing issues. Uh, COVID really helped us prepare for that. Uh, and so we have been cross-training other departments and utilizing drivers from um, wastewater and, and other um, public works departments to cross train. So we're in good shape at the at the moment. Uh, but when we come into full full city plows, it's 12 hour shifts, uh, 24 hours a day. And so uh, that's that's a lot of wear and tear on our drivers. So this will actually be the second full city plow for those Spokane crews this winter. Department leaders say they're just working to keep those drivers fresh and able to get the job done. Yeah, we thank them for doing that mm -hmm. job. Well, this heavy wet snow is impacting just about everything right now and power. Well, unfortunately, it is one of them taking a live look at the of outage maps right now. About 1000 of Vista customers are currently without power in these freezing temperatures at this hour. A majority of those outages are in the Orofino and Pierce areas. So the snow shutting things down across the inland northwest tonight. We also wanted to let you know about some things that you're going to want to know about. Heavy snow causing the COVID testing site out at Spokane Falls Community College. It had to shut down today. One of the center beams from the drive through shelter collapsed under the weight of all that snow. Because of that damage, they will now be moving that testing facility to the fairgrounds. That's going to take place tomorrow. Spokane County libraries, all Lataw County buildings, and Efreda City Hall also closed. And schools were delayed or canceled throughout the day today because of the snow, North Idaho College closed early today. Washington State University Spokane campus was closed and Pullman's campus closed early as well. At least 70, that's 70 schools or districts closed today because of the snow across both Washington and Idaho. And we now know that Spokane Public Schools and the Mead School District will be doing a delayed start again tomorrow. Mead and Spokane will be delayed by two hours. So here's how the Spokane schedule is going to work tomorrow. Express Child Care will open at 8 o'clock, 
High schools will start at 10 elementary and Montessori's those open at 1030 and then middle schools will open at 11. SPS says they do not take the decision to cancel schools lightly. It's really difficult. We have over 30,000 students in our district and we have to think of all of our students. And as I mentioned before, um, some of our some of our families, this would cause counseling school would cause a huge, um, enormous impact to, to their day. Now, according to the SBS superintendent, Dr. Adam Swinyard, about 700 SBS students are experiencing homelessness right now. Another 60% of students rely on school meals so they don't go hungry. So he says school is the primary place for a lot of students to warm up and get fed. So what, what do you guys think of the snow? I love it! Favorite season. There we go. A lot of people are out there today enjoying the snow, so we want to see how you are enjoying the feet or several <laughs> inches of snow that we are seeing. So text us your photos or videos. You can use the near me section of the CREM2 app, or you can just text them our way to that number right there at the bottom of your screen, 509-448-2000. And if you send us a video, be sure to tell us what we're looking at, where you took that video, and also include your name so we can give you some credit here on our big broadcast. We want you to have fun out there in the snow. We, of course, also want you to stay safe and stay up to date on everything you need to know. So including an hour by hour forecast, you can get all that information just by texting the word snow to 509-448-2000 and we'll send that link directly to your phone. All right, our snow coverage continues tonight. Snow just didn't hit the Spokane area hard. It also hit Coeur d'Alene as well. We'll have more from Coeur d'Alene coming up after the break.